Bula Vinaka, my name is Letia and I'm from the beautiful island of Laos and I love listening to Today FM. Today FM rocks. My name is Casey, I'm from Tavua. We love Today FM in Tavua. Today FM rocks. My name is Selina, I'm from Tavenga Vengamba. I love listening to Today FM. Today FM rocks. Bula, my name is Carlo. I love listening to the music in Today FM in Malak Ellen. Today FM rock. Today's hit music on Today FM. In the news tonight, PM says Anthony is insignificant in the affairs of the nation. Police says drug circle bigger than anticipated. And police chief reveal plans for 2018. From the studios of FBC Suba, Jackie Spate. Prime Minister of Orenge Mbaini Marama has labelled Fiji Trade Union Congress General Secretary Felix Anthony a joke. The Prime Minister was responding to a statement Anthony made during the organised FTUC weekend march in Nandi about shutting down the country if there is no resolution to the ATS impasse. Akusita Thale has more. Right now. FTUC General Secretary Felix Anthony told over a thousand people at the Saturday march to shut down the country if they have to, as well as shut down bigger things to come if ATS workers on strike don't get a resolution. Prime Minister Vorenge Bainamarama today slammed Anthony's statement. You know, you should not take uh, Felix, uh, Felix Anthony seriously, because everyone knows he's a joke. He's a big joke. Not only is a joke, he's also... Uh, what uh, I've been told is a big great actor. The Prime Minister also likened the FTUC General Secretary to a failed movie actor. When asked about Anthony's statement on calling other unions to start thinking about a national strike, Ben Marama had this to say. I just said that he's a joke, so don't take him seriously. When asked by FBC News, Anthony did not want to comment on this. Well, uh, that's uh, any individual's choice, how they take me and how they don't take me. I, I really don't need to comment on that. Eh? Anthony adds they're still waiting for an approval for a permit for a similar march to be held in Suva in late February. He says they applied for the permit two weeks ago and hopes they receive it in time. Akusita Tale, FBC News. Meanwhile, police will not comment on Felix Anthony's weekend speech in Nandi about shutting down the country. Police Commissioner Brigadier General Siti Veningilio doesn't want to comment on the dispute at this time. Meanwhile, the Public Order Act forbids anyone from provoking a breach of the peace and the Crimes Decree forbids seditious intention, defined as among other things, attempting to procure the alteration, otherwise then by lawful means of any matter in Fiji established by law. The Public Order Act also states that a person is deemed to be seditious if it's determined he intended his stated comments to be acted upon. However, Anthony told FBC News he has breached nothing at all, adding this is something the union will seriously consider if it becomes necessary in the future. Meanwhile, Air Terminal Services Employees Trust Secretary Vili Finau has today once again claimed that all $5.8 million of dividends paid to them is accounted for. While responding to the ATS Chairman Ria Said Kayum's statement, where the chair revealed evidence that they had paid $5.78 million as dividends. Finau claims they have all the documents to prove that the more than $5 million is accounted for. Uh, contrary to the allegations, uh, nothing is missing. Uh, we confirm that everything is accounted for and uh, we are just um, uh, wanting the management to give us access to our office, which we have been illegally locked out of, and uh, we will be able to check all our records and come back to you with all the information. Police will not only come down hard on drug dealers, but also on those who are found in possession. Police says in some of their recent drug raids, many people were caught working for drug dealers by being middlemen. Kelly Vardalo reports. A number of drug raids around the country have proved that drug dealers are getting more tactical in trying to outsmart police, even going to the extent of using youths to deliver parcels. Because some are just um, uh, serve as middlemen. Uh, some are not uh, users of drugs, but they use because of the money that is gained out of it, business uh, wise. But if you are using it as business or you are not um, you are utilizing it as uh, for uh, 
for consumption, but these are illegal uh, drugs. So from the farmers to those that are selling it, these are all the areas that have been targeting all along. ACP Tundravu says youth see illegal drug trading as an easy way to earn money. The National Substance Abuse and Advisory Council says the younger generation need to think about their future and stay away from drugs. We need to encourage our young people, I would like to advise young people to, to stay out of it. Because drugs affect your body, affect your health. And that health is something that will never come back. Many of the recent drug raids conducted were reported by the public and police say this is very encouraging. We need a concerted effort from all stakeholders, especially uh, those that have the information in regards to that. Fijians are urged to call Crime Stoppers on 919 or any command centers if they have any information on the illegal drug trade. Police is also reminding people to be vigilant of illegal drug activities that might be taking place around them. Kelly Vadala, FBC News. Major undercover operations are a vital part of the Fiji Police Force strategy in their battle against crime. With various police operations currently being reviewed, Police Commissioner Brigadier General Siti Venengilio says they will be taking a different approach this year. Ali Kimbia with the story. <laughs> Plans of a major restructure within the Fiji Police Force will be presented to government soon. But we are in the process of, uh, of looking at our restructure as well which I will be briefing government in the next few days uh, before the end of the week. Um, and part of that is police posts and looking for available state land where we can uh, position ourselves to look after the community. Gilio says they will continue to battle and reduce crime rate. For our crime stats last year, we'll be releasing that uh, soon. We are much better off uh, than what we were uh, in 2016. Uh, we made a significant impact uh, in regards to crime, overall crime. Uh, a major operation for police this year will be the general elections. Uh, as we head towards election, um, we would like to to have a series of uh, operations just to provide that environment uh, so that uh, people can access to democratically exercise their right. And, and we have a role to play in that. Gilio says they will ensure a safer Fiji is maintained for everyone. Because we are serious about addressing that and maintaining and sustaining uh, our battle rhythm against crime throughout this year. And that will, like I've said before, that will involve a, a series of overt and covert operations so that we can make the place safer for all Fijians and all visitors to Fiji. The Fiji Police Force will not be content with what they have achieved last year and Gilio has demanded every police officer to lift their performance of serving the public. Ali Kimbia, FBC News. Still to come, FRA to install more streetlights around the country and people urged to adhere to weather warnings. Stay with us. Bula, kero mai sina toka, kero ndo tali taka na vororong na radio Fiji One ndo mai viti. Kaya wala na rin siya, usko mina sa mga tukola ndo tali taka na radio Fiji One ndo mai viti. Kaya mga zo sila tali, na gura rama ina omani, na ronga, gito tali taka na gudo mina sa vale, na gudo rongo, vororong na radio Fiji One ndo mai viti. Na radio Fiji One ndo mai viti na bonga ni BNN. FICAC today filed an appeal with the High Court of Suva against the acquittal of MP Dr. Mahindra Reddy on one count of bribery and one count of undue influence. The case was called before High Court Judge Justice Vincent Pereira. FICAC has been given three weeks to review the court records, after which both sides in the case will make written submissions. FICAC has appealed on eight grounds, and the case has been adjourned to February 9th. The Fiji Roads Authority has embarked on a major streetlight project which will see the installation of close to 3,000 streetlights across the country over the next six months. FRA CEO Jonathan Moore says this is expected to not only improve safety on the roads but within communities as well. Maggie Boyle with the details. 
Lighting up our roads, the FRA is rolling out an ambitious plan over the coming months to improve access in a number of areas. Queen's Road between Lamy and Singatoka, we've got 867 street lights to be installed. Be clear on this, we're not street lighting the entire length of Queen's Road. We're street lighting the settlements. So in between the villages, in between the health centres and the schools, there will still be no street lights. But where there are people living, there will be street lights between Singatoka and Lamy. That should be complete by June of this year. A Greens approach has also been adopted with renewable energy being trialled in Bar. The Nilanga Solar trial with um, the, the, the 26 streetlights in Nilanga that we're actually trying with solar power is about finished. Um, we get some good results on the light intensity being thrown out by those solar powered lights. Uh, the, the final completion will be the end of this month when we'll have the entire section completely opened. While some townships will have their street lights in place by next month, others are at the tender stage. Similarly, between Bat and Nasuri, we're doing uh, 1,600 street lights, again in the settlement areas. They'll also be complete by June this year. Uh, Navua, 124 lights should be finished by the end of February. Uh, Savu Savu and Lambasa, we're about to start work on, uh, on street lights in Savu Savu and Lambasa. That will be finished in July this year. Um, we're at the tender stage um, for lighting in Suva City and also in Wainabakasi. The FRA will also be working on upgrading bus space across the country with more than 80 earmarked for work so far. Maggie Boyle, FBC News. Rain is expected to ease over most parts of the country later this week. With some improvement in the weather overnight, the heavy rain warning that was previously enforced for the Lao and Lomaiviti groups is now downgraded to heavy rain alert, whilst heavy rain warning remains in force for the rest of Fiji. The rain that has been affecting the country uh, from past uh, 12 to 24 hours uh, is uh, currently easing, and uh, we expect the active trough that has been slow moving over Fiji to weaken as well. As we go into tonight and tomorrow, we expect uh, more of uh, periods of rain becoming more occasional overnight. And then from tomorrow, we'll see that uh, more of uh, the uh, easing of rain. The Fiji police force has raised concerns about the number of people that ignore weather warnings. With the heavy rain warning still in place for the whole Fiji group, police are asking the general public to take precautions when it matters. Chief of Operations ACP Rusiate Tunravu says warnings are already in place and yet people are not following advice, which results in accidents. Our police officers have to be deployed uh, for a 15-year-old that was drowned and swept away in the current in Lutu. Um, when you book these are some of the things that we, we have been highlighting eh? uh, that uh, the, the, the weather is unfavorable to us but people tend to test the natural power that is there you cannot test that Tundravo says they cannot afford to risk police officers saving people who ignore weather warnings take it from us we, we, we really cannot also uh, take risk and deploy our police officers at night uh, rescuing people it is part of what we are doing, but at least we cannot go that far if people themselves do adhere to the advice that was given. Government is gearing up for the launching of the International Year of the Reef by the Prime Minister of Warringen Baini Marama tomorrow. It's an important event for Fiji, who currently holds the COP23 presidency and having launched the Ocean's Pathway in Germany. A Talanor session on the protection of our reefs was held in Savusavu today as a prelude to the launch. Eleanor Trangaiview reports. Fiji depends on the reef for at least three of its national industries, fisheries, agriculture and tourism. And Assistant Minister for Environment Lona Eden says a coral reefs are on the front line of impact when it comes to climate change. We are facing drastic loss on a global scale of our reefs and a direct result of climate change. And I hope this year will be a catalyst for action on climate change and for ocean health. A high-level symposium aimed at putting together clear and concise action inputs and a plan for protecting our reefs was held in Savu Savu today. It brought together national and regional heads to discuss the gaps that exist in the system. We are at a crucial juncture to decide as to what we should do next. The next significant steps to be undertaken would be to analyze the gaps and establish actions to fill those gaps, 
towards the protection outcomes we need for the crucial ecosystem-based assets. Some of the gaps identified include the need for tighter coordination of strategies, linking national targets and commitments to policies, aligning the national targets to the existing regional frameworks, and the engagement of the community and the private sector. On climate change, we are moving in the right direction, but we need to really speed up, and that can only happen if citizens demand action, political leaders regulate markets, and we leave it to business to find all the new technical solutions we all need. And this is, of course, key to the preservation of coral reefs, because the number one reason why coral reefs are bleaching or dying is to increase temperature. The symposium ended with a comprehensive plan for the year and discussions on the monitoring of these actions. Eleanor Turangaiviu, FBC News. Ahead in sports with Jamie Nepal to play build-up matches abroad, but we now join Akosita for the latest in business. Thanks, Jackie. Good evening. Coming up, Stock Exchange labels 2017 a success. And in growing, Fiji water project boost for villages. Stay with us. Bula FM number 2 and seri Leading our business tonight, the South Pacific Stock Exchange has labeled 2017 as a remarkable year. The Stock Exchange says that major changes were seen on the stock markets, the majority being positive. Catherine Krishna reports. Impressive gains were recorded in the SPS's key stock market indicators in 2017. This has been confirmed by the SPSC Business Development Manager, Pritesh Prasad. So as of to, uh, 31st December 2017, the overall market value of all the listed companies is stood at $1.8 billion. So that is an impressive increase of um, above 36% in 2017. Uh, Prasad says that the total return index saw an increase of above 41% to an all-time high value as well. Now in 2017, a total of 147 new investors uh, invested in the stock market. He added that majority of the investors were from private sector and most were below the age of 35. Prasad said that in 2018, SPSC plans to build on the success of 2017 and promote more investment in the stock market. Catherine Krishna, FBC News. We now join Rocco from HFC Bank with the latest from the stock market. Thank you. Let's have a look at some of the highlights on the economic calendar this week. This morning, New Zealand released its electronic card retail sales for December, while Euro Area Harmonized Index of Consumer Prices as well as UK's inflation numbers for December are expected later tonight. Tomorrow, the calendar is limited to Australia's consumer confidence and November home loans in terms of major news, but there's lots of happening on Thursday. Thursday is Bank of Canada Day. They would release their interest rates decision and expectations are for a rate hike. Also, Australia would release its unemployment rate for December. The week is expected to end with major releases for the U.S. on Friday. Economic data includes U.S. housing stats, jobless claims, along with a delayed weekly U.S. oil inventory report. Remember, our Fiji dollar is pegged to a trade-weighted basket of currencies, where performance of our trade partner currencies affect the ultimate movement of our Fijian dollar. And that's the wrap from our local stock market, Dinaka. Thanks, Rocco. Now looking at today's currency exchange rates set this morning for the Fijian dollar, the dollar had a mixed day of small changes against most of the currencies we cover. It rose against the Chinese yuan and the US dollar, as well as the PNG Kina. On the commodities market, oil prices were on the rise, closing at $64.51 a barrel, Gold dropped slightly to 1,338, while silver rose six cents to end at $17.28 an ounce. And in growing Fiji, 400 villages of Tukavesi in Dakonrove Vanua Levu now have piped drinking water following the completion of their rural water project. 
The Water Authority invested over $176,000 in the project. Ritika Pratap reports. The previous system, which was constructed in 2008, had major leakages in the piping network. For the last three years, a youth and I had to close and open the valve in order to have water in the village and prevent the school from closing and keep our children in school. Now I no longer need to do this every day. This is a big relief for me and the other villagers. The Water Authority outsourced the project as it aims to empower the community and give more ownership of repair and maintenance. 47-year-old Seriana Yalayala says she is grateful for the assistance. Before this project happened, we rarely had water in our taps. This is now a thing of the past. This project will help us in the preparation of meals, bathing, washing our clothes and other daily chores. The Water Authority says they will continue to implement works that ensure Fijians have access to safe drinking water and proper sanitation. Ritika Pratap, FBC News. And that's business this evening. Now to sports. Here's Jamie with the latest. Thanks, Akasita. And good evening. Up ahead in sports, Fijiana out the better performance in Sydney. And Fiji pearls to play overseas clubs in the lead up to the Commonwealth Games. These stories and more after the break. it's hot. The Fiji Airways women's sevens team could be boosted with the return of a senior player when they compete at the Sydney Sevens next week. After a stint in French club rugby last season, Litia Naingato makes a return to the national squad and is in contention for a spot in the national team, in the tournament team rather. Vastel Prasad reports. Dubbed as the beast of the Fijiana women's team, Litiana Naingato is putting her body on the line to make it into the final team for Sydney Sevens. I'm 80 to 90 percent uh, confident that uh, I'll put my hands up for that uh, for coach selection to make it to the team. The struggle has been real for her, trying to adapt to Seven's code of rugby after a short contract overseas. It's, it's been hard uh, from from uh, 15s to 7s, but 7s to 15s is a bit easier. And yeah, I've been gearing myself up. Captain Ana Maria Rongida says Nengato is a strong contender for the final sport in the team. Yeah, she's uh, still in the 15th uh, mode, but uh, seeing her last uh, three weeks, she's been improving. These players have a lot to prove after their outing in Dubai last year. And with players like Nengato coming in, there could be a change team in Sydney. Vashnil Prasad, FBC Sports. Well, Rugby Cape Town Sevens Champions New Zealand hope to continue its winning streak in the Sydney and Hamilton tournaments. Dubbed the Fiji and offload king, Pio Tuwai is making his comeback and aiming for this year's Rugby World Cup Sevens in San Francisco. Speaking exclusively to FBC Sports, the 34-year-old says he is eager to represent Fiji again and has been working hard to get back into shape. I sacrificed Christmas and New Year and kept training as I really want to join the Fiji Sevens team again, especially for the World Cup and the Commonwealth Games this year. I really am aiming for a spot in the team and also to help the new boys. The Fiji Pearls netball team will play three international matches in the build-up to the 2018 Commonwealth Games. The matches are expected to condition players ahead of the competition in April. Meli Tavanga reports. The Fiji Pearls will be put to real tests during the three international tests. But before that, there's a plan of hosting a game against the top New Zealand franchise. We hope to have... Uh, the Canterbury Tactics 
team, the New Zealand franchise side, coming here in, in mid-February, just waiting on confirmation for that. And again, that's great match practice. But the test matches some um, six weeks later in New Zealand, that will be really, really tough. The Fijian side has ruled out a medal place finish at the Commonwealth Games, but they will give their utmost best to deliver the Fijian style of game. The top six countries in the world have players spread throughout Australia, New Zealand, England and South Africa who are playing in their semi-professional leagues and at the moment we don't have any players who are involved with that. So it's a tough ask to expect that we're going to, to medal. Meanwhile, Fiji Pearl's mid-court player, Alessi Paul, says vying for a place in the final squad is intense. Uh, to vie for our own positions is very competitive. Uh, we need to work uh, extra hard. Uh, for me, I need to work extra hard as there are a lot of young players in, uh, in the squad right now. Right now, Coach Wilson has put aside the idea of winning a medal at the Games, but her only focus is to get the players to meet the standard of the professional opponents. Melita Wanga, FBC Sports. The Fijian government has allocated a total budget of $1.8 million to Fasanok to prepare Team Fiji for the 2018 Commonwealth Games in Gold Coast, Australia. Meanwhile, Fasanok is urging federations to use its allocations wisely and avoid passing on player levies to athletes. Meli Tavanga reports. The Fiji Sports Commission has split the grant of $1.8 million to ensure it is used accordingly. The planning for the Commonwealth Games government gave it in two parts. One was the preparation grant for those sports attending. That preparation grant was given in September and that's 1,124,000. We've got a further 670,000 for their participation. Apart from the Commonwealth, the grant will also cover the preparation of our Fiji Airways men's team to the World Rugby Sevens in San Francisco. Now the majority of sports have already received it. And part of the preparation money for the Commonwealth Games in rugby, in particular, was for their preparation for the Rugby World Cup as well. Meanwhile, Team Fiji chef of the mission, Patrick Bauer, is calling on sporting federations to arrange for the players' levies, as they don't want the levy issue to be a stumbling block for the athletes. We're asking the national federations to get on board. I mean, it's the way that they budget their allocations and make sure that they've sorted this out rather than getting the burden to be on the athletes. The Commonwealth Games run through the 4th to the 15th of April in Gold Coast, Australia. Melita Wanga, FBC Sports. Lambasa's Bal Sanju Reddy has been confirmed to lead the Mbaba Singh Alliance for the 2018 season and is eager to take up the huge responsibility. Meanwhile, Vodafone Fiji football coach Christophe Gamel hopes district coaches will take on his suggestions when mentoring their teams during the Vodafone Premier League. Vastel Prasad reports. After leading the Lambasa football side to the champion versus champion victory, Mento Bals and Juredi is ready for another shot at the top level. My transfer is a little bit of a problem for me, but if the management feels that uh, I'm important to them and they want me to continue, I'll work out something and then uh, we'll see what it is. It won't be an easy season for all district coaches, including Reddy. Well, I have also to speak with all the coaches of the Vodafone Premier League. Eh? I want uh, that now it's finished, 2018, they have to apply uh, what I'm looking for because uh, it's the modern way and it's very important. Lambasa begins its campaign against Suva, who are flying high after beating Rewa 3-2 over the weekend. Starting off this season uh, with a high note, and we'll try to focus more on our league games, uh, the, uh, which is uh, more important to us in this uh, year's uh, event. The Bama Singa Lions play Suba, 7.30 at Ratu Dakambau Park in Nausori on Friday. Vashnil Prasad, FBC Sports. The Fiji National Rugby League hopes to secure games for the Fiji residents against international clubs this season. The residents played a few matches abroad last year and are hoping to attract overseas clubs to Fiji in 2018. Luciana Tangeda Kimbao reports. The Fiji residents have made their aim to prepare players for major tournaments and development manager Antonia Nawasitawa says we are looking forward to some international game time. This cousin has been going on with clubs abroad to come over or the resident to go across but uh, uh, that's how we can say at the moment. So this cousin with the overseas clubs and affiliated clubs to to have a game or some games for the residents. 
With the local player make up the residence team, the Fiji National Rugby League aims to involve other local players as well. Looking for a good uh, season for rugby league. I think we've, uh, we've achieved for the last uh, year's World Cup, so we're looking ahead to the 2021 World Cup and we want to build on from there. So in identifying players, identifying coaches, identifying technical staff to look after these players as uh, FNRL is looking towards 2021 World Cup. Meanwhile, one local player, Tevita Kalo, aims to represent Fiji this year. Been through a lot of, uh, lot of uh, things. Training is not uh, easy and uh, not, uh, it's very tough. And uh, who knows, uh, I want to play in the resident team this year. And hopefully on the May test, uh, we're on the white zone. The final 30 member squad to represent Fiji residents this year is expected to be announced next month. Lucia Natanya Vekimbao, FTC Sports. In tennis, world number one Rafael Nadal powered into the Australian Open second round with a routine win of the Dominican Republic's Victor Estrella Burgess. The Spaniard playing his first tournament match since suffering a knee injury in November, winning 6-1, 6-1, 6-1. That's it from Sports Tonight. Angie joins you later on with weather and in new media. Take a look at the new smartphone that's boasting one of the best batteries in the market. That's coming up. Bula, Kero Maisina Toka, Kero Ndotali Taka Navarro Rong on the Radio Fiji One and Domoy Viti. I have a new initiative. In your media, meet the newest bargain phone with a big battery, the Zenfone Max Plus. It's super cheap and has a super-sized battery. It's weather time now with Angie. Hello there and welcome to Weather World. A trough of low pressure that is gradually moving over Fiji and is bringing us all this rain and clouds. Clouds is slow moving and is expected to weaken. But do note, a heavy rain warning is still in place for Viti Levu, Yasawa, Mamanutha Group, Kandabu, and nearby smaller islands. Let's check out the Western Division. Fairly cloudy with showers expected for tonight. Eastwards from Pek Harbor to Suva, overcast conditions with cool winds. Expect squally thunderstorms with rain tonight as well. And up north, much cloudy and fairly humid, this end could also expect overnight showers. At sea, northerly winds 20 to 25 knots, easing later today with rough seas. For the tides, low tide will be at 12.53 with high tide tomorrow morning at 7.11. Sunrise will be at 5.44. For tomorrow, we're expecting showers to start our day, but it will gradually ease and give us clearer conditions. Tomorrow's temps, Lombasa will be quite hot with a high of 32 degrees. And looking further on to Thursday, light showers could be the in thing. And that's all from the FBC Weather World. Jackie. Thanks so much for that, Angie. In Fiji and Pulse today, we asked, is it right for the Fiji Sevens team to keep away from the public and have a media ban? I think so. Just give them time to uh, think about themselves and uh, have some privacy regarding uh, how the place should be chosen. Yes, and uh, to keep the um, profile privacy and the information. Because the people of Fiji want to read about the newspaper and watch the news, what's going on with the team and how they're training. Well, this is very, very funny, I tell you. All of my family, whether it's day or night or 1 a.m. in the morning, we like to see the sevens uh, rugby. I don't know what's wrong with the sevens people. Why they want to stop from media? Man? It's very, very funny, man. In the 
world of the weird and the wonderful scientists build a computer models in order to understand how complex systems such as traffic, weather or cancer progression work. A new approach to building such models together with new advances in artificial intelligence may significantly speed up this process. Recapping the main stories, PM says Anthony is insignificant in the affairs of the nation. Police says drug circle bigger than anticipated and police chief sits reveals plans for 2018. For these stories and others, you can tune into our daily sister radio station, Gold FM. To our poll question for this week, we are asking, would you like to see new players included in the Fiji team for Sydney Sevens and Hamilton Sevens? Visit our FBC website to answer. Before we go, our shot of the day, sent in by Sumesh Prasad. This shot was taken in Lautoka today when the skies cleared following a heavy downpour since Sunday night. You can send us newsworthy pictures and videos on email fbcnews at fbc.com.fj or share it with us via Facebook page FBC News. You can also follow and tweet us your news tips at FBC underscore news or simply hashtag FBC News. That was your FBC News for tonight. From the team and I, stay safe. Good night. Bula, Kero Mai Sinatoka, Kero Ndo Tali Taka Navarro Rong on the Radio Fiji One and Domoi Viti. I have a honor in the Commission of Football of the Tali Taka on the Radio Fiji One and Domoi Viti. I am going to go to the Tali Taka, the Gurara Mai Naomani, and Roma. We do Tali Taka and the Domoi Viti, and the Domoi Rong on the Radio Fiji One and Domoi Viti. The Radio Fiji One and Domoi Viti, and the Bonga and the BNN.